Well, at least you know it probably won't break when you drop it. Got an 03 Honda Civic here. Um, one of the door locks isn't working. Let's check it out, see what we got. All right, if you're gonna troubleshoot anything, you have to know how the systems work. In this case, I drew up the door locks on how a lot of these Hondas work, uh, or at least the newer, more modern ones. Um, uh, it's a lot more complicated, this. I just tried to keep it pretty simple. As you can see, you got power coming from the battery going over to the fuse box. This is under the uh, hood. And then from there, you got power that goes to the multiplex control unit. Um, the multiplex control unit, also known as Maiku, um, that's a fancy fuse box, really. That's all it is. It's a fuse box that has circuit logic in there and that can control things. Um, so it goes there and then it goes out to your door locks. These are the four door locks that I drew in. Um, so basically, in order for these door locks to work, you need to have input to go in to tell the door locks when to lock and unlock. So in this case, you have your keyless remote, the fob, and you can you can press the buttons on there and that'll send the signal over to your Maiku and that will actuate the locks. Or you can use the actual switches and press the button and that does the same thing. Sends a signal over, tells the multiplex control unit, hey, we need to fire the locks. And then the way the locks work, they're just a simple two-wire design. And, you know, motors, they run in either one direction or the other direction depending on which way the power comes in. So if you run the power down one line and ground the other one, your motor will run in one direction. And then if you switch it the other way around and run power down this line and ground the other side, the motor will run the opposite direction. And that's all the locks are doing. This multiplex control unit just sends power down one side and grounds the other and the locks run one way. And then it flips it, flips the power in the ground, and then the locks work the other way. So the easiest way I found to do it is let's press the buttons on the keyless and the door lock and make sure our our inputs are going in. And so if we know the inputs are going in, then we know the problem is from here down. You know, and then so we'll go, then I'll usually go to the door lock that's the problem and then see if I have my powers and grounds there. And if I don't, then I'll work my way back and is it either the wiring or is it the control unit itself? There are relays inside some of them you can replace, some of them are part of the actual unit, and you would have to replace the whole unit. And so that's how my thinking goes, and that's how I diagnose these things, is I, I do the inputs into the multiplex control unit, and then if those work, then I go right to the end, and uh, let's see if these things are working. And obviously the most common problem is going to be the door lock actuators themselves going bad. Yeah, well, I'll test the uh, inputs. We'll just lock it. You can see it locked. And then we press it once and the, the driver's door will unlock. Press it again and now this came up. So this door is working. This, and so that means my inputs are just fine. I also tested the switch on the door lock and it's doing the same thing. So the inputs are getting to our multiplex control unit. So now this lock right here you can see it's locked we'll press lock again well it was wasn't all the way locked now it's all the way locked and we'll hit the unlock and you can see it came up so we know it's getting power here because it went down and then it came back up but let's see you can see it's it won't open We press it all the way up. Now the door. Now the door opens. See if it does that every time. All right, so it goes all the way down. So we know our power is getting here. So the problem is not anywhere from here to the multiplex control unit or the fuses or anything. Our power is definitely limited to this door, most likely. And we'll unlock it. Yeah, it's consistent. It doesn't pop pop this up all the way and, until we uh, bring it up all the way. 
So let's get this thing apart, see what's going on. All right, first thing we'll do is pop this cover off. And usually we could just take a small screwdriver, put it right in the top, just pop it down just like that, take it out. You can see I go from the top because it has one little thing there, but it has two on the bottom. And then we'll take these two screws out. And then there's a little lock right here that we need to pop around. So we just pop it over and then we'll lift the rod out. You can see this little thing, this little thing right here. You just have to push it over and there's a rod that comes over and then goes down the hole. I'll show you that rod here in a second. Just be careful. These little plastic pieces right here, you can break those pretty easy. I've broken quite a few of those. In fact, I keep these in stock because I break them a lot. You can see there's a shot inside with the door handle removed. So all you gotta do, once you, uh, once you move that little clip over, just reach in, just lift the rod up like that out of the handle. And Hondas always have a screw right in the middle here. Sometimes there's a cover right here where the handle is and the screw goes down like that. And sometimes, you know, they're up underneath here where they go in at an angle and secure it. And then sometimes they're back behind here, either in here or over here. Um, so in this case, we got to get this plastic trim piece off. And usually we can go right here and just push in there's a little plastic piece in there you just need to pop it up and then this piece will come out so that's all I did is I push up like that and grab the edge of it and pop it out You can see that sticks in there. You can see right there, that's what I'm pressing up on in there with the screwdriver to pop the thing out. And if you look closely, we should have a big screw right in there and one right over here. That's securing this handle on. We got to get both of those out to get this door panel off. There's one screw, and the other one, you can see, you gotta use a longer screwdriver. Now everything's loose. Now usually we can just grab the edge, and just pop it out. You can see it's loose. Now it's just caught on the top here. I just have to lift it off like that, and then we got to disconnect the wiring to our switch here. Just a tab right there, just squeeze it in and disconnect it. There, there's your door panel. 
Alright, as you can see, it's covered with a uh, dust and vapor shield. Um, it's sealed from the factory with this goo right here. Um, if the vehicle is only a year or a couple years old, sometimes you can peel this back. Out here where I live, this stuff just becomes brittle and just cracks and peels. Um, and you can't get it off. So what I do... I just cut it below and right next to the uh, sealant there and just do it that way and there you can see there's our door lock actuator right there. Alright we'll just go ahead and unplug it just squeeze it in and take it off. And you can see there's our two wires right there. So we'll go ahead and uh, test this. And make sure we got both power and grounds going both directions. I'm pretty sure we do and that the problem is in this lock itself right here. But we'll double check, make sure. Now in order to connect to this like I did, I am using my AES Wave um, test lead kit. You can see it comes with a million different test lead kits or a test leads and and different adapters and things that you can use. And see these terminate to alligator clips so I can just put my test light right on there and make sure the power is going in both directions. You can see it's imperative to use the correct size uh, probe there. You don't want to damage these pins. All right. Now that we have our test leads connected, um, we'll just use the test light and this is going to take the place of this door lock actuator. That way we're running some current through there and putting a load on it. So pretty easy. We're just going to connect the test light. One side of the test light goes to one wire and the other side of the test light goes to the other wire. And what's nice about a test light, it doesn't matter which way we run the current through it. We can run the current through this way, it'll light it. We can run the current the other way and we'll light it. Because that's what the door lock actuator is actually having done to it. The current's flowing one way and the door lock turns one way. Current flows the other, it turns the other way. And so we're simulating the same thing with this light. And you can use other tools, but I found the light is the best way to do it. Now we just need the keys and we'll go ahead and try our door locks here. Now sometimes, um, the door locks will not work with the door open and in that case you either put your screwdriver in through here and close it if the if the latch has a sensor this one does not have a sensor and you can tell because we only have two wires going here so it doesn't have a sensor here so that means as you can see right here well can you see it right here we'll have to probably press that in in order for these door locks to work so let's try it We'll hit the door locks. You can see it's not working, so we'll go ahead and close the switch here. Now they work, and you see our test light lit. We'll unlock it. Your test light lit. We'll try it again. Lock. Unlock. Lock. Unlock. Obviously, I have to hit the unlock twice because the it only un unlocks the driver's door. And you can see we had no problems running power through our test light. So, pretty common issue. Door lock actuator is bad. We'll go ahead and get it fixed. Now, in the case of this one, it's nice. We just have two screws right here, and we have the rod, which makes it really nice to replace. I really like this style. Um, if you own a Honda, you're going to be replacing the window regulators and door lock actuators if you own a Honda at any length of time or for any length of time. Those are the two, uh, or those are two very common problems with these things. Um, the lock rod right here can either seize up, I've seen that, um, where they seize up and then they won't move at all and then you end up actually usually breaking the door handle on the outside trying to get in. Um, or the uh, little gears inside go bad. There's little plastic or nylon gears that mesh like that and what happens is they shear off. And so when you hit the lock, you'll hear them spinning. In fact, I think I have some video of that. I'll, I'll insert some video here 
of when uh, one of these door lock actuators will go bad and you just hear it spinning in there. Sounds like a buzzing or a vibrating noise. Kind of hard to describe, but as soon as you hear it, you'll know. Now, many times, if you listen close, you can hear uh, these door lock actuators going bad. Let's see if you can hear this one. I don't know if you can hear that little buzz at the end. That's the gears going bad. Try it again. Yeah, you, you can hear it on the unlock that the gears are going bad on this one. And they'll get worse and worse. So, obviously, this uh, Honda right here is going to need a new door lock actuator pretty soon. Okay, as you can see, I have three different uh, door lock actuators here. These are all off Hondas, or four Hondas. Um, this is the one that's going to fix our vehicle. Just the, lock, or the rod attaches right there, plugs in, the electric motor just, you know, does that, and the screws go right here. You can see these three are dummy screws, they don't do anything. Or dummy holes. This um, style, you can see it has the, the same three screw holes right here. And this actually mounts inside the door um, and attaches to the door latch. So you have to take those three screws off. And if you watch my Civic um, door lock actuator video, you see how much fun those are trying to get those three screws off and trying to get this up in there so that it latches on. It's, it's kind of a bear. And uh, sometimes they just pop right into place and sometimes they don't. Um, and sometimes you have to take the whole latch assembly out to get these things to line up properly. But usually you can just sneak them in there and take or get the three screws out and sneak them in there and then this the rod will attach like that. Um, but this is another version, you know. Um, and then if you watch the Civic video, you saw there's another version very similar to this, but it doesn't have this big old contraption on here. But it's the same basic principle where it attaches to the latch. And then you have the newer style, and this is off. This one right here is off of a 94 to 97 Accord, and then this one is off of a 2008 to 2012 Accord, and this one is in, actually incorporated into the latch itself. You see that. And so you have the electrical connector right there, and um, it has, you know, the door lock actuator inside here. And so it just, uh, you know, locks and unlocks it like that. And so, you know, with as many problems as Honda has had with door lock actuators, I think it was kind of foolish for them to incorporate it into the latch. Um, I'm sure they wanted to be able to sense whether the door was open or shut without having a different without having a switch and so that's why you know they incorporated or at least that's my guess um, but they've had so many issues with that um, that I, these parts are more expensive so it was, in my opinion it was kind of foolish to incorporate it in there unless they updated the design but as you can see this broken one in my hand they didn't update the design this one you could hear the wheels or the the gears spinning in there when you tried to lock and unlock it and then eventually it just those gears stopped meshing and then they it didn't work anymore at least in one direction it worked in one it worked locked but it wouldn't unlock I think is what it did um, or maybe the other way around I don't remember but in any event those are three different styles obviously the one we're working on today is the easiest one to do these probably the more difficult and and these can be a bear too so I really like this style. I wish they would all go to that, but it is what it is. Well, at least you know it probably won't break when you drop it. We'll just go ahead and get these two screws out. You can see that's all they are. And we should be able to just peel this off from our rod here. Just pop it around and that's it. Just comes off just that easy. I really like this style. Did I mention that? All right, we're going with an aftermarket unit today. Um, there's the part number for this for this application. 
So that would be a 2003 Honda Civic, the uh, right rear door. Um, obviously, as always, you got to make sure you get the right door and the right um, part for your model year. So let's go get this thing put on the vehicle and get this thing fixed. Right, now we'll just slide it back on the same way. It can be a little tight sometimes, just like that. Then we'll get our screw holes lined up. Sometimes you may have to work the door lock back and forth to get them to line up. And we'll just put our screws in. Start them both first, then tack them down. We're just going into a plastic insert. As soon as it snugs up, that's it. That's all you got to do. All right, before we uh, do go any further, let's plug this bad boy in. Make sure it works. Remember, we got to press our button over here. And press that in, and now we'll lock and unlock it. a lot louder but it works all right now what I'm gonna do and obviously make sure before you button this up you got your uh, thing plugged back in we'll go ahead and uh, tape this back up and I am going to use all-weather tape this is uh, made by duck brand right there um, this stuff works well uh, and if you looked closely, you can actually see this one has been, I think I did a window regulator on this at one point a couple years ago. And um, I taped it back up with this stuff. And uh, the stuff works well and holds up and it doesn't disintegrate. If you put masking tape or duct tape or some other stuff like that, um, it's going to disintegrate and go bad. And you're going to have a lot of issues when you try to pull it off the second time. All right, now that we got it all put back together, let's get this uh, door panel back on. Now first, we gotta make sure we connect, reconnect our electrical plug here. Get that plugged in, and then this door lock rod, oh, you can't even see that. This door lock rod, we gotta make sure that it goes through the opening right here. Kind of, you got to just fish it through the opening and then gently, without lifting it up too high, get it back on the lip here. And we're going to get it on there and press it down like that. And that way it's locked into place. And then now everything should line up. snap all our clips back into place. Sometimes those little clips will pop out in the door. Make sure you find them and put them back in. They usually don't break. They usually sometimes just stick in the door and you can pop them out, put them back in the panel. All right, we'll get our two screws back in.
Same thing, we're just going into a plastic insert, so we don't need to crush it. You can see the lock rod might uh, might get caught back in there. You can just lift it up and around, get it get it to where we can work with it now. All right, now what I'm just going to do, I'm going to reach in there. Pretty hard to film. Just going to take that lock rod, drop it in there, and then I'm going to make sure when I do that 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 is pointed to the back like that. And then I'm just going to bring it around and snap it into place just like that. There, now it's connected. Now I can just set this back in place and we'll get our two screws in. I find a little pocket screwdriver works best or works great for taking Honda door panels apart. Same thing as before. Anytime you have multiple, multiple screws going in the same thing, Get them started first before you tack them down. I'm just going to snug them up like always. We don't want to strip these plastic fasteners out. There. Good to go. And then this, with our two things on the bottom, we'll just make sure to snap this back in place. Like that. And then our panel right here we'll just make sure we got to get this piece in first like that and then this groove we just got to make sure it kind of sits in there we'll snap it into place just like that eh, don't be like me and forget to pop one of these clips back into the door panel son of a you can see this clip right here that goes right there at the end of my finger didn't pop out stayed in the door see the rest of these popped out eh, I missed that I need to take this out put it back over here You just pop it back into the door panel. There. I knew better. Well, there you go. That's how I diagnose and fix these uh, Honda door locks on these older Civics. And I pretty much troubleshoot them the same way on all these Hondas. Um, the systems can be complicated. Sometimes they can be difficult to troubleshoot. But if you know the basic design and know the basic uh, operation of how these locks work, you can get them fixed. And as, in any event, as always, if you liked the video or it helped you out, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.